Hello and welcome to our webinar. My name is Josie Sutcliffe and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Engrain. I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's session and I want to thank you for your time and for your interest. Before we start, I'll run through a few quick logistics. We'll be recording today's session and posting it online and we'll be sure to share the link with you. You have the option to listen via your computer speakers or by phone. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. You can submit a question at any time through the question pane. We'll do our best to answer all the questions at the end of the webinar and to follow up directly with any questions we're unable to get to. Joining me today is Roland Della Cuesta, Engrain's Director of Partner Technical Development. Roland is not only an Engrain expert with years of managing our team of animators and artists, but he's also an experienced 3D Studio Max animator. I'll be passing the presentation over to Rola in a couple of moments, but for those new to Engrain, we wanted to provide a quick introduction. Engrain is the creator of a breakthrough volume graphics technology on which we've developed software and solutions. At Engrain, we're focused on transforming the way people share knowledge. And our solutions, developed using the Engrain production suite, have been proven to accelerate learning by 60%, improve task performance by 30% and allow novices to perform at the same level as experts. This chart that you see here provides an overview of some of the solutions we've delivered to our customers over the past few years. Everything you see here, all of the solutions developed for the content you see were developed using our production suite. In fact, it was in response to an increasing market demand for our virtual training and support solutions that we developed the products and tools included with the production suite. I'd now like to pass the webinar over to Roland. Hi, everyone. I'd like to welcome all new attendees to this Engrain webinar series and welcome back previous attendees. We really do appreciate your, uh, your attention and, and uh, interest in our products. Uh, again, I'm Roland Della Cuesta, uh, the Technical Development Director here at Engrain, and I want to make sure that uh, you all understand that my focus really is uh, you guys, the users of our, of our software, and that your experience with it uh, is as good as it can get. Uh, on the screen right now, what I have is a quick little chart of how we use uh, the production suite and the production process. Uh, you know, first we start with models. And then we, in many 3D formats, we convert them uh, into 3KOs. And right here, the third part of it, what the focus of this webinar is, is actually adding the knowledge to the 3KO. 3KO stands for 3D Knowledge Object. It's not just a standard 3D model. Uh, the beautiful thing about it is it holds the animation information and and moreover, what we really like to plug with our software are the interactive practice tasks. I'm going to jump right into a live demo here using Producer Pro 5.0. What I've got uh, on screen right now is just a, a little simple few objects in, in, in a break hub here. For those of you with limited uh, experience in digital animation, uh, producer does not have a steep learning curve. As you can see, this, uh, this UI is really quite easy to, to follow along. Uh, for those of you have, who have uh, experience in other 3D packages, you'll find that producer is really easy to pick up and adopt into your existing production pipeline. Uh, the user interface right here that uh, I'm going to focus on we have our left toolbar and all of our toolbars that you can access uh, in the top toolbar. That's pretty easy and uh, easy to follow along. On the left side, we've got all of our environment tools. You can move the scene or move objects as well as rotate them. We've got our tools here, flows, callouts, uh, and drawing tools. I'm going to start off this demo by uh, showing you how to animate in Producer. Over on the right side here we have our command panels, our, our, our working panels. Here's the animation one. 
Okay. I've got one prepped, but what I want to do for this demo is, is create one on the fly for you. I can do that by just simply clicking on the Create Animation button. In any of the modes, it's also the shortcuts control N. One thing to remember about end grain is uh, the, the very simple thing. What you see is what you get. This is the workspace. I have an, an animation timeline here where I capture my events. And when I say what you see is what you get, the first thing you do is you set up your shot and then you capture the event. So I've got my shot set up already. I click on create animation. And you'll notice that uh, the first thing that I get is that my startup snapshot or the start state of my animation is auto-created for me. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put a little label on this and start up by clicking, clicking a callout. And a callout is a text box. I'm going to click on the screen here and call this the move break drum procedure. This text box is editable. As you can see, it's got a formatting bar. I can click on my text. Move it up a little bit, make it bold, center it. Resize it. Okay. To change what I already have on screen, I can right click, capture all. You notice that my scene updates. Next, I want to go through a procedure of, of removing parts. Animating the scene, again, is about what you see is what you get. Hide my callout. And if I right click and drag, and then use my scroll wheel, I can rotate the scene and zoom. Middle click and drag. and Then I reset my screen. Again, double click in the animation timeline and I capture the event and move that in my timeline. I can also copy and paste. Let me put a little pad in here for those guys who are animators. I didn't have a little bit of a pad here. I'm going to go back and show that screen and right click, hide that. Capture all. That way, let's have a little bit of a transition. Okay, let me go back to show this. Okay. I'm going to go to my drawing tools and I'm going to pick a circle. Hang on. Let me just draw a circle around what I want to remove. these nuts here that I want to remove. I want to have a little bit of an arrow to point at them. I can right click on that and reformat it, change its size, make it a dashed style. I can even copy and paste that. And adjust them on the fly. I'm going to put in a callout here, floating callout. These are called the, I'm going to go back to a little bit of a bigger font here. These are called the CTIS nuts. So what I've done here is I've created indicators. Okay. Now that I have my scene, again, what you see is what you get. I double click in my timeline and 
I move the I move the the frame to where I want it. And then I'm going to make those nuts move. Again, I'm going to set up my shot the way I want to see it before I capture the event. Move out this nut. Move out this nut. Double click in my timeline. Notice that in my keyframe here, I didn't lose the information. Those those arrows and circles are still there. So what I've captured is is still it, it didn't go away. And then I'm going to take those two objects again, and I can control sh click and select multiple objects. Oops. I can also collect s select them in my parts tree. I'm going to move them again. Oopsie. And double click in the timeline. And then there are some nuts associated with, uh, sorry, washers associated with those nuts. I'll do the same thing with them. I see that the washers are here. Select them. Move them. Oops. Undo. Capture keyframe. Make them go away. Capture another keyframe. Then I can just actually go back. The quick thing in end green. I can just watch it happen just by quickly previewing with the easy and play, pause, and stop buttons here on the left side of my animation timeline. Simple as that. I have a, a prepared one here just to show you a few more features. You can have any number of animations in a 3KO and it's held in a single file. If I double click on this, you'll see that I have a, a bit of a longer animation prepared. If I just quickly hit the play button, you'll see a cleaner prepped version. Right here, you also see, I'm going to pause this and stop it. If I can toggle back towards my uh, any one of my animation keyframes, and here I have the break drum, which is in the end what I want removed. It's in context view. Again, one thing I can do is have an object. Anytime I want to change something, I can just do it on the fly. That's how it looks like selected in normal view and in context. And if I want to change the way it looks, all I need to do is update the keyframe frame by in the right click menu of that keyframe, click on the capture all or control Q, and you'll notice that the keyframe has changed. I'll set that back to where it was. Again, it's as easy as that in editing in ingrain. So the one thing that uh, it's not just good for animation. Everybody has the ability in many uh, of the 3D packages to do straight animations. The one thing that you're going to find when you get uh, your hands on Engrain Producer Pro is the interactive tasks, which is really our strong suit. I'm going to click on here right now. I'm going to create tasks, interactive tasks for the end user to interact with the model, the 3 ko itself, based on the animation that, that was built. So here in Interactive Tasks, the workspace is the same as, as in the animation. 
I can click on this button up here, which looks like a standard refresh button, which is Reset Startup Snapshot, and get my start scene. And I'm going to then click on the task tab here is Add or Create Task. First thing you're going to get is this Properties panel. It's really important uh, to remember that what you see is what you get. Again, setting up your scene and then capturing the event. I'm going to call this Webinar Task 1. Uh, your options here, the uh, end grain tasks allow a lot of freedom and choice. You can have your end users uh, automatically attach parts by using buttons in the viewer UI and that's up to you to set them. That's a whole other webinar. Um, then you can show part screen tips. One of the things that uh, uh, you'll find is that we have these labels that pop up when you mouse over objects. Um, you can allow your students or your users to have that and those are also show up in this parts pin. You'll notice that the difference between animations and tasks in a 3KO or an end grain interactive practice practice test, the end user actually physically clicks on parts, drags them and drops them in a parts bin. So they're really, really interacting, immersing themselves in the experience. Uh, the step options, uh, a couple of uh, options here. User can complete steps in any order. So for those of you who would like to set up some sort of e-learning and not have them to be, you know, point A to, to, to B all the time and have the randomizing, we have uh, uh, options there as well. I'm just going to keep the default setting and click OK. And the first thing you'll notice that my first task start state is automatically assigned. Okay. There are five task types you can use. There are remove, attach, move around constraint, and uh, I'll show you that in a second. Those were those nuts that were moving that you saw that they had a they moved around the thread that was set up in a modeling uh, state. And multiple choice questions, I'll get to that in just a second as well. Again, just like everything else, uh, everything starts with uh, the state and then you capture the event. So I know that the first thing I did on this procedure was remove those nuts. Now I know those were the CTIS nuts. Where did I put those things? There they are. I'm going to grab those out of my timeline. Uh, sorry, out of my uh, my parts list. And you'll notice I want this to be the view. I'm not manipulating the scene. I'm going to grab those and move them into the parts bin. And then I'm going to go over here to my task storyboard in the bottom. It's no longer timeline. And the top button here is the interaction steps. I'm going to click on that and it creates a new task step event for me. And it will show me where I start and where I end. Okay. The next thing was I wanted to remove the washers. So I'm going to turn this model around. I can right click and drag with my mouse. I can zoom with my mouse wheel. And then I'm going to pick the washers. Now I'm going to move those into the parts bin as well by dragging and dropping. And then I'm going to um, also add another event. But there's something about tasks that uh, you know everybody knows you don't get everything right the first time. So one of the things that you, you can do, you'll see here in the Properties panel, very important uh, for everybody that's going to be using Producer Pro and evaluating or get that in your, in, your, uh, in your studio. Everything's in the right-click menu. I can, just because I've created a step doesn't mean I can't change it. In the right-click menu of that task step in the storyboard, I right-click and pick the Edit Step Actions, and each, each task step has different features to it. You've got start actions. Right now, 
uh, it's, it's in its state that I want it to be, but you can play animations, display messages, and show callouts. There are success actions. When someone gets it right, you can display messages, play an animation, show callouts, or jump to another step. But I'm thinking this, you know, when, when someone does something and they get it wrong, I'm going to give them hints. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to display a message if they get it, it, it uh, pick the wrong part. And I just click on display message, add an action, and then over here I'll just put incorrect. Please try again. Okay. And if they get it wrong again, you can have any number of uh, failure attempts. I'm going to, again, pick what I want first. This time I want to show a callout. I'm going to add a failure attempt. This time, since I want to show a callout, I'll pick, I'll pick that call out. Okay, I guess, I guess whichever one. Okay, and then between animations, this is interactive, so the end user will manipulate the scene. One of the things that I want to make sure that between steps, that my end user has a good experience is there's this button here in between task steps called enable tra transitional animations so no matter how they leave that last step it goes to what you want them to see so that they have a good view of it I'm just gonna make it a two two second default animation like we hit OK okay um, to round this out I'll add I'll add a multiple choice question so it's not just that uh, you can do things in the interface. Let me click, quickly click on new multiple choice question. You get a quick dialog box here. I'll ask how heavy is the brake drum? I can add answers. Is it five pounds? 10 pounds, or 20. I'm, I'm going to make sure that the correct answer is 20, and just hit OK. And to make sure that uh, I've got what I want, I'm going to preview this. I can quickly go to Task in the top toolbar and Preview Tasks. I'll save that configuration, yes. Just loading up here. Here it is, right here. And first, I'm in the webinar tasks. This is showing you in Internet Explorer. And I can manipulate the scene myself. Zoom in. Uh, pick the wrong thing, try to drag that into the bin, oh, incorrect, please try again. Um, I'm going to try to drag something else, oh, nope, I get the little hint that I picked the call out, okay, so now I've got the hint, I'm going to grab that, it's got the, a bit of a time test, grab those, and you notice that the animation, that two second animation set me back in a place where it was good for the end user. I'll zoom in again as I feel like it. Grab those parts. Notice I can just move as I like. And then the question comes up, how heavy is that? Once you're done, the task is, is finished and you can move on to the next ones. And that was a, that's a quick demo. 
going to hand this over back to Josie. I see that we're running out of time. Great. Thanks, Roland. Um, so with any 3KO content you create in Producer Pro, whether it includes animations or tasks or other information like interactive fluid flows, inverse kinematic animations, and more, you can take those resulting 3KO files and very easily drop them into Word, PowerPoint, PDF. Uh, you can export them or publish them as part of an HTML page. Or using the production suite, you can use our builder, our application builders, such as the virtual task refresher or virtual index builders, to very quickly put those 3KO files that you've just created into a configured application. And uh, we've, we've shown some of those in some of our other webinars. And um, next, the next webinar in a couple of weeks will focus specifically on the builders and the power tools related to that. As a bit of a summary, the Endgrain production suite includes the various components you see here on the screen. So it includes Producer Pro, the application builders. It also includes the Endgrain integration kit. The integration kit is designed for developers with JavaScript uh, or VBScript experience to set up a two-way communication between um, their own application and uh, the Endgrain uh, viewer, which is embedded inside. We also include over 15 power tools in the production suite. Uh, these tools allow you to develop with greater efficiency. They allow you to develop in a studio environment where you might have more than one developer creating animations, for example. Um, you can have them working on individual 3KOs and then merge them all together. Um, another example of a tool is a tool that allows you to deal with geometry changes that happen in your source file from 3D Studio Max. Yeah, everybody knows it's important to have revision management uh, in, in their pipeline, and, and certainly we have a strong tool that does that. Right. And uh, also includes a copy of Okino Polytrans and its DCC pack, which allows you to import a, a good range of file formats into Ngrain. Um, it also includes the native... Uh, export from within 3D Studio Max and Maya to the Endgrain format. And then finally, it provides access to the Production Suite site, which is a, a website that we've created that includes a range of not only software downloads, but also uh, technical tips, supporting materials, and so on. I'm a contributor. My typing is way better than my speaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, to give you an idea of what's coming up soon, um, we have, uh, well, actually, there's one more slide here. Um, just to give you an idea of where you can go get some more product feature videos and tutorials, there's actually some really great tutorials on animation and task creation if you want to go and, and watch them. Each tutorial is just a few minutes. Um, as well, we have an Endgrain blog that covers different tech topics. And you'll see Roland and is a contributor there, as, I, as am I. That was Josie. <laughs> click one more slide there and uh, the next webinar uh, is in a couple of weeks we hope that you can attend it um, about power tools and, and application builders and with that we'd like to open up to questions let's have a look here in the question pane okay all right I have a first question here so this question um, is asking about tests so um, I saw that you can create tests out of your tasks by adding in questions. Um, can I track the results of those tests if I'm running it on a learning management system? Yep. Uh, so in Producer, uh, we have uh, to publish. Where is that again? I'm gonna, should I open up? Sure, yeah, why not? In, in publish, um, you'll notice that we are SCORM 1.2 and two, uh, 2004 uh, Revision 3 compliant. So when you go to publish your 3KOs, uh, that it will create an XML that um, inside the 3KO that, that is trackable. Yeah, and I know we track sort of the typical interactions there as well as scores and so on. Um, okay, the other question is, um, okay, so how do you, how can you view the animations created? Is it just in the uh, 3KO format? Actually, uh, we, we love you guys to use our stuff, you know, 3KO, we want it out there. But uh, one of the features that we have also here in Producer, 
Um, here under the animation tab, you'll see that you can export it to AVI. Now that's going to create uh, a, an uncompressed DV so that you guys can do what you will with it. But what it does is it, it creates a, an AVI of the, the display frame and whatever you want that's, that's showing on screen. And then it's up to you to go in and compress it to a WMV or an MP4 or an MPEG, whatever you want. Right. Yeah, and I've actually seen this being used a few different ways. Um, one usage I've seen is for customers that want to include the resulting animation actually as part of a flash deliverable. Oh, yeah, right. yep. And what they do is they export to AVI and then they use um, any industry available mm. encoder yep. to convert that into a flash format. So yep. from time to time you'll see animations created with Ngrain running in flash. Yeah, we've done it ourselves for some uh, for some end users who wanted to have some flash deployables as well as their 3KOs deployed. So yeah, just create a simple FLD out of it. Yeah, and actually we have one. I know one of the power tools in our set for production suite is a, basically a batch ABI um, exporter. Um, okay, I have another question here, um, which is, um, well, it's pretty specific. So I think they work in technical documentation. Can I create a line drawing view? Line drawing view, yep. Let me just go back to uh, another interface. Right here in the top, there are different uh, views, and you can find tutorials on this online on that website that Josie pointed out earlier on the slideshow. Um, there you have it, uh, right there. Uh, it's one of our rendering modes. A lot of people that do technical doc documents are used to seeing these line drawings, and, and uh, you know, with our strong suit with the, the type of technical customers and mechanical customers that we've supported throughout the years, uh, this is one of the things that people wanted to see, so we included it. Okay, there's another there's question here. a lot of questions here. here, but now I can't expand that window. Maybe if you drive. Yeah, actually here. Okay. We're just trying to make our window bigger so we can scroll to the next question. I can see part of it, and it says, yeah. I believe the question is around using Pro-E models, perhaps as the input format. It's sort of, oh, yeah, there oh, yeah. as can a source. A Pro-E as a source. Um, so the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, uh, you can um, either, with, through Okino, they have a, an add-on pack that allows you to convert Pro-E, or using the Transmagic Ngrain CAD Companion, you can convert your Pro-E models to the Ngrain format. There's a few really nice things about converting to Ngrain that are unique to our technology. Uh, one of them is that um, because we're a volume graphics technology, you don't actually have to worry about um, polygon reduction and deleting geometry before you convert to get the resulting file size down. Um, all you do is you take your CAD or your 3D Studio Max model as it is, load it with polygons, have holes in it, whatever you want, we don't mind. <laughs> and when you convert to end grain, you just specify the resolution you want to convert at. Much like you think of a, a computer screen resolution, in end grain you're thinking kind of like a, in a cube mindset. Yep. So let's say you convert at 1000 um, resolution. That resulting 3KO will be dramatically compressed. We usually see, you know, gigabytes getting down to megabytes um, and so on. And you'll achieve that with one button click instead of having to spend potentially hours reducing polygon counts or deleting geometry. Yeah, it's going to save you time, especially in the studio. So uh, we invite you to uh, look us up on the Endgrain channel on YouTube. Uh, last, the last uh, webinar, uh, there's a, a little snippet in there where you'll see that a 105 megabyte model was squeezed down to a 15 megabyte model. All right, well, I think we actually got through our questions today. If anyone has any follow-up questions, feel free to contact us. Um, and uh, we really thank you for your time. Once we have a, a copy of this available, we will be sending you an email with the link. Thanks again for your time. We wish, wish you all a great day. Thanks. Hope to see you in the next one.